let's delve further into this story. I'm now joined by Dr. Moses Nguare, who is a senior research scientist and head of education research program at the Africa Population and Health Research Center here in Nairobi. Dr. Nguare, I suppose it is a delicate balance. How exactly can countries reopen schools while at the same time ensuring the safety of children? Uh, thank you, uh, CGTN, for having me on board. That's possible because we have seen a few countries uh, open, and I think the number is increasing. We've seen Malawi, we've seen uh, uh, um, Ivory Coast, we've seen um, uh, Zambia, and others are following suit. But you are right, because when you talk about reopening, safety of our children comes first. And then the other important thing is we have to make decisions based on evidence. So for you to combine those two, probably using an approach that would allow us to learn as we move on would be good. And that's what probably we would call adaptive management kind of doing things. So we have to do that incrementally. We have to let a small number of students, for example, like candidates, go in. And this is what people are talking about, opening in phases. It allows us to learn as we move on because no one really understands or can claim to understand the implications of the COVID-19, given that it is a new phenomenon. So using an approach that allows us to learn as we continuously open incrementally using a fixed approach would be a very good um, opportunity and option for us to follow now, the country. Doctor, uh, as you mentioned earlier, some African countries have cautiously reopened their learning institutions while some others like Kenya are lagging behind. What exactly is the challenge that has led to this? I think um, if you look at uh, countries in Africa, and uh, let me restrict myself to Africa, we are different. The context are different. If you look at the case of South Africa, look at the numbers of infection, more than 670,000. Again, look at the numbers of infection in Kenya, more than that 8,000. Um, that, that alone tells us something, that the context are different. If you look at the countries that probably are opening, you will find the numbers infected or confirmed infected are quite low. So that's one. You also have to look at the rate of infection as well. So that kind of evidence informs the decisions that the countries are, are making. And apart from that, so you have to uh, use the evidence and the context within each country for you to open. And finally, look at the environment. For example, we are talking about, um, there's a country like Malawi, Ivory Coast, and all that. Um, the numbers enrolled in school are low, and they can be able probably to manage that. But if you look at the case of Kenya, we are talking about more than 17 million children and youth that we have to think about. So the issues of uh, the context really uh, are matter, and they have to be thought through um, very carefully before you follow uh, suit to uh, following up what other countries have done at the moment. And uh, doctor, looking at the financial aspect, the education sector has, of course, lost considerably in terms of revenue and lost time. How exactly can it recover from this? Well, two things. You've talked about uh, losing the revenue, revenue, and you talk about uh, time. Uh, if you look at time, uh, we, we do have, for example, we do have children who have missed school, who are out of school, for example, even without COVID. But sometimes we they, they are brought back to the education system and they are and they are supported to recover and to be where they are supposed to be in terms of their age. And you have programs, for example, like accelerated learning and those kind of things. So the point I'm making here is, if you resume, and that should be the first stage, reopen and have a system that is running, it should not be difficult to recover the time already lost. And here we should not be talking about the time, we should be talking about the skills and the learning that they were supposed to do. They can be able to, to, to recover that and teach us in Kenya particularly, I have confidence they are trained, well trained enough to help students recover. Furthermore, remember, they are, the curriculum is structured in a way that you are looking at competencies, you are looking at skills. They are uh, things that we call co competencies, for example. Okay. It's not a must that you teach. 
Dr. child, each and every aspect that the child has to learn, and that will help them uh, recover the, whatever we are calling as time lost. Of Our, course, for Dr. Nguari, thank you, thank aspect. you very much, Dr. Nguari. Uh, we'll have to leave it there for now. Uh, researcher with the Africa Population and Health Research Sec Sec Center, Dr. Mo Moses Nguari, joining us live on the line.